I invite you to stand for the call to worship, which will be a call and response. So you follow my lead. Blessed is the one. The one who comes. The one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one. The one who comes. The one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one, the one who comes. The one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one, the one who comes, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one, the one who comes, the one who comes, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one, the one who comes, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one, the one who comes, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one, the one who comes, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one, the one who comes, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. excitement of Palm Sunday and its processional has a counterpoint. And their counterpoint is that through Lent, we remember the words of the Gospel of John, referring to Jesus. What has come into being in the Word was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Friends, we extinguish this candle to signify human efforts to extinguish God's light and to testify that God's light ultimately prevails. Let us open our hearts to God in confession. Join me as we pray. First of all, that you will praise Jesus as he entered Jerusalem and O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. But by the end of the week, the crowd mocked him as he hung on crucified. Save yourself and come down from the cross. We confess that our faith also runs. We 
Amen. Thank you, God, for your love and mercy. I thank you that the man has me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. Chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, in the glory of God the Creator. Amen. May God bless to each and every one of us a rich understanding of this holy word. The children are welcome to come up and join me. All right, what a great looking group we have this morning. So can somebody tell me what today is? It's a special day. What are we celebrating today? Just yell it out if you know the answer, because I know a lot of you do. Palm Sunday. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> so since it's a special Sunday, we have a special song and some special friends that are going to help us learn that song. So I am going to turn this over to Miss Lisa and Miss Diane. Good morning. You've already done part of what we're going to do with Felipe, the blessed is the one. So let's remind ourselves how that one went. You have all the text and there's no pitches, just talking. Ready? <laughs> blessed, blessed is the one, the one who comes, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And we'll need to, what we will do is we'll be layering it. The next one is wave palm branches. So ready? And wave palm branches, wave palm branches, wave palm branches. Next one is Jesus rode a donkey. 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 And the last one is Hosanna to the sun. Hosanna to the sun. Hosanna to the sun. Hosanna to the sun. So what we're going to do is we're going to do them all in order first, but then we're going to have our friends come and help us and you will watch our friends that know what they're doing <laughs> um, tell you which parts of these that you're going to do. Okay, but let's do it all together first. Ready? From the beginning. Blessed, Blessed is the one, the one who comes, the one who comes.
but you're just going to keep saying the one that you're saying, okay? So actually, Evan and Liam, I need you in front of this group, okay? So, and you guys are doing the blessed is the one. So you ready? We'll get started with you. Keep saying it, even when we add the next group, okay? Here we go. Blessed is the one, the one who comes, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. When he comes, when he comes, Amen, definitely. That was awesome, everybody. Good job. <laughs> so before we leave today, I just want to remind you all that next week is another special Sunday, which is Easter. So on Easter, we're going to collect our fish banks that we have been uh, collecting money in and doing the, the giving devotional with that. So next Sunday, we'll collect these. There'll be a special basket up here. So anybody that has them can come up uh, and drop them off. So just want to remind everybody, so you all are welcome to go to Sunday school. stand. Usually we stand as a sign of honor and acknowledgement of the gospel, but I, wanna, uh, I want us to stay seated for the reading of the gospel today, which is Mark 15, verses 1 through 47. So it's the whole chapter. This comes right after all of the turmoil of when Jesus was arrested, when he had been um, in the upper room, had had that last supper, and then had been arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, and had been taken for judgment. And so we read this part after the religious authorities had done what they could to entrap him 
and judge him, and now he's been handed over to the Roman authorities, the occupying authorities. Listen for the word of God. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things, and Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd and have him, to have him release Barabbas for them instead. And Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that, that is the, government, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed them in a, in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, put his own clothes on him, then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby, by, a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right, the other on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! He who would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, also with the scribes, were mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we might see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. 
And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, and he said, truly this man was God's son. There were women also looking from the distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself awaiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, Pilate granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stories are such a part of our human existence. They are a part of our lives in formal and informal, informal and informal ways. So today we will weave the story of Jesus in his final days in the scriptures, in the sermon, and in the message of one of our hymns, Hymn 200, a cheering, chanting, dizzy crowd. So I'm going to encourage you to open your hymnal to Hymn 200 and have it ready, and I will call us to sing a particular verse or verses along the way with the hymn, with the, with the sermon, because the hymn will carry us through the Holy Week. It will be Hymn 200. I enjoy a good parade. The floats, the fire trucks, the candy. I used to enjoy parades a lot more when the kids were younger. And if I had paid no attention at all to the news cycle, at a parade, I could tell you if an election was in the near future just by the number of political candidates who were marching along in line of the parade. Sometimes I knew the candidates, sometimes not, but I must admit that I may have been slightly um, swayed about the candidate, at least as a person, on a crucial factor, and a crucial factor alone, was, which was, did they use the name brand candy? <laughs> <laughs> Palm Sunday seems to me like an impromptu parade of one. Yet many lined the streets of Jerusalem as they welcomed <laughs> Jesus in. The only float was a lowly donkey, and that mysterious and charismatic leader was on it. The people cheered. Maybe they were confused, but they cheered as Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem. And they chanted like we did this morning. They sang the psalm that we used earlier in the service, a psalm for welcoming back a victorious king from battle. And their joy was real. They wondered if their anticipation had finally come to an end, they wondered. They didn't have to hide anymore their joy and eager yearning. And they were yelling, save us. That's what Hosanna means. Hosanna means save us. That's what the psalm says. That's what they chanted. It wasn't quite a politician running for office, though. 
But the people wanted to see in Jesus that king they longed for and awaited. That ruler who would finally get the Roman occupiers off their back. That Messiah that God had promised who would finally come and reestablish the kingdom once held by the legendary King David. Let the first and second verse of our hymn tell us the story. day which we now call Palm Sunday ended with no royal proclamation, with no political rally, not even a statement from Jesus about him being the Messiah or about how God had finally heard the prayers of the people. Silence. The crowd saw that Jesus after entering Jerusalem had gone into the temple and took a look around and they thought to themselves, this is it, he's going to say it. It would be the perfect place for him to proclaim he is the king. But nothing. He, he left. Jesus wasn't from Jerusalem. He looked at a place. This was a teacher from the less sophisticated rural north. And the disillusionment of the crowd began to show. And in physical form, as they walked on discarded palms on the streets, some began to move from jovial anticipation to cynicism and doubt about Jesus. Let the third verse tell this part of the story. wasn't there to save them from the Romans like they hoped. The parade hadn't been a power move, it had been a power flipping move. The power Jesus would show that week wasn't the kind of power one measures counting weapons in a storehouse or money in a bank or followers of a rally. The power Jesus would show that week could barely be understood even as events took place because it could only be measured if one could quantify his willingness to confront the Roman injustice with nonviolent determination, or quantify his commitment to live and model love for God, not love for power, which had been the illness of the religious establishment. If we could quantify his focus to bring about something new, the good news of God's love, unafraid of the death that would have to come first. Let the fourth verse tell us this part of the story. <laughs> It's hopeful. The children lead us in a parade. We wave palms. But Jesus was clear that Sunday that it would all lead to that Friday and its crucifixion. 
Jesus knew the conflict of heavenly power and human power was going to come to a head. As it had before in other stories, all throughout the scriptures. Only this was a little bit different. The story has those two elements, those two levels, what the humans want and what God wants. The human power wanted political power. Both the Jews and the Romans and everyone in between wanted that kind of power. God wanted to reconcile humanity to God. It was a message that Jesus had preached from the very beginning, a message that was one not of judgment, but one of love. In this clash, at first, it would appear was won by the violence of the humans, by the injustice and the prejudice of an oppressive colonial system. And as we read, it turned very nasty. When first in the week the crowd was shouting, save us, save us, Hosanna, Hosanna. By the end of the week, the crowd was mocking Jesus from the cross, taunting him and saying, save yourself. Go ahead, save yourself. When first in the week they were willing to crown him king, they were ready for it. Now they capitulated to the Romans and to let him have the title of king of the Jews above in a mocking way, a mocking sentence nailed on the cross. They were crucifying one person or they were letting one person be crucified, but those who walked by thought, better you than me, because crucifixion was left for those who were the rebels, those who were the insurgents against the Romans. But they were not aware that by letting them, they were not aware that by letting Jesus be crucified, they themselves were symbolically executed because now they had collaborated with the, with the oppressive power of the Romans. But Holy Week has its plot twist, and the biggest one is reserved for the weekend. Jesus was killed because he challenged with a lesson of love and inclusion a system which oppressed the people across the empire. He was killed because he challenged a religious system that was so insecure in its power and its purpose. He was killed because it is threatening to love the people in society whom we would rather not see as equal, the poor, the sick, the widows, the marginalized. And Jesus let Good Friday come to him because he knew there would be redemption and grace on the other side. The more Jesus tried to love, the more the crowd and the authorities maligned him. But the biggest mistake they made was to think that the solution was to kill and bury him. It reminds me of a Mexican saying about the resilience of people and the inevitability of a movement. Nos quisieron enterrar, pero no sabían que éramos semillas. They wanted to bury us, but they didn't know we were seeds. Little did they know that burying him was the final step before the transformation of Jesus and of the world as we know it. Little did they know that the crucifixion would be reinterpreted. Little did they know that the cross would be no match for Jesus. They wanted to bury us, but they didn't know we were seeds. We'll let the last verse of the hymn conclude the story for now and carry us from today until Good Friday.
one of the traditions in the Presbyterian Church for many years is the collection of the one great hour of sharing offering at Easter. You have a colorful insert in your bulletin that talks about the special offering. The children have been collecting their loose coins uh, during the season of Lent uh, in a little colorful fish, which we will ask them to bring next week. In here, you will see the different places where the money we collect will go, and it is a testament to witnessing the, the love and grace of God throughout the world, not just here near to us, through the program of the, the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, through the program of Presbyterian Hunger Program, and through the work of the self-development of people. This is a, a collection that has been taking place for many, many years. We invite you to use the envelopes that are in your pews if you wish to make that, that offering today, or to do so this coming Sunday on Easter Sunday. This is the time in worship when we pledge our time, talents, and treasure to God. Let us offer ourselves up to God joyfully. Let us pray. God of mercy and love, as we enter this holy week, we thank you for Jesus, for his lesson of love and sacrifice, his witness of forgiveness and grace, his example of trust and faith. May our efforts in ministry and our offerings help us faithfully share all we have received from you. In the name of Jesus we pray.
because of the way we started worship, I don't want to let the worship continue without saying welcome. Welcome to all of us who are here. I'm grateful that we get to worship together. If you're worshiping here for the first time, welcome, and I hope that you will sign your name or write your name in the attendance path that you will see coming across and give us contact information so we might be able to reach out to you. Holy Week is a big week for every church, and it's no different for us. We will have special worship services this week. They are listed in your bulletin. So I hope that you will join us. Just to highlight a couple in this, on Monday, Thursday, we have a service here at 7 o'clock this Thursday. And on Friday, a special service where, where we walk around the neighborhood in a modified stations of the cross, literally carrying a cross, and praying for the community, <laughs> praying for each other, and asking for God to connect with us. So I hope that you'll think about that service. And then, of course, two, uh, three Easter services and a brunch in the middle. Lots of activity. Come and join us and be a part of this worshiping effort this week. As we pray for one another and with one another, I want to ask for your continuing prayers for several people. Uh, but first, we start with uh, an acknowledgement. Uh, Nancy Fulmer uh, Crump passed away this last week after a long battle with cancer. This is Jeff Crump's sister. And she passed away, and uh, I don't know about our arrangements. I imagine they will take place out west where she lived. And so I ask for your uh, prayers for Jeff and his family and for Nancy and her children. Philip Foyles and Rachel Bourne are asking us to continue to pray for Doris Foyles. This is Philip's uh, mother. She's recover recovering in a rehabilitation center to learn to walk again following surgery. She needs her support and encouragement through a difficult recovery. And we're grateful that Philip had time to be able to spend with her in Oklahoma this week. Julie Diker is asking us to pray for Jerome Diker. That's Jeff's father. He's in the hospital with pain that they cannot figure out yet the source. So we pray that they will figure it out and be able to address it. This week we pray for Christians in Palestine and around the world. We pray that they will feel a sense of hope in this holy week as we all look forward to the Sunday, the Easter Sunday and the resurrection that it means for all of us. I ask for your continuing prayers for Brooke Brown, our church secretary. She, she's making her way back into uh, family and work responsibilities, but it's slow going. And uh, so we ask for your prayers for her. We prayed last week for Herb Hoover Sr. who lost his son, Herb Hoover Jr. Well, Herb Hoover Sr. has been in the hospital and is, is out now in his home. Uh, if you have our Facebook page, I, look, I invite you to look for that information because his address is there if you want to write him a note. We continue to pray for John Connor who is anticipating result, test results about uh, the lymphoma that has developed again in the side of his neck. As we have seen in the news and as we have experienced ourselves, we continue to pray for school safety in our, in our schools uh, around the country and for sensible, gone legislation that will make us safer. Will you join us as we pray? Save us, God. Save us from the things that draw us away from you. Save us from ourselves when we are the ones that are getting in the way. Save us from distractions that focus, uh, focus us on the kind of human power that Jesus was battling. Save us, eternal God, from violence, from disruption, Save us from illness and ill will. Save us, eternal God, in the forgiveness of our sins through Jesus. Allow us to proclaim that phrase of Hosanna both today, even on Good Friday, and on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. 
Allow us to be, O oh Lord, instruments of your love to people in our community and beyond who are suffering or grieving or recovering from hospitalization. Through the care that we offer them, may they feel your spirit at work in them, healing from inside. We pray, Lord God, for people we haven't even met sometimes, people across the globe, but in our kinship with them through faith, we ask that you lift them up and give them hope. In this, the holiest of weeks, we pray that you allow us to feel closer to each other and to you as we focus on Christ. And we pray in his name using the words he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and faithfulness of debts. We forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. in the name of the Lord, to show us the way to God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion in the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, now and always, and God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. 